guys. So today we're going to be doing a video talking about what the best fire starting tools and equipment are for winter. Now similar to the video that I did a little while ago talking about the best survival knives for winter, I want to talk about the best survival fire starters for winter because as important as a knife is in the grand scheme of survival, and it is important, I'm not going to take that away from this video, I think it's important to also focus on high quality and good fire, st or fire starters because fire is critical for the winter. So this video is probably going to be a little bit shorter, I'm not going to try to make it too complicated because I think it's basic and I think it should stay basic. So for me, and I've kind of done a video striking on this topic, when I did, you know, why every survivalist, bushcrafter, really outdoorsman should have a ferro rod with them when they go out. Whether that's summer or winter, I still think that that's a good message, you know, in general. But uh, for winter specifically, the reason why I like ferro rods and the reason why I recommend them is for a few reasons. And of course, you know, when you get a ferro rod, you want to train with it, you know. Ferro rods are not the most intuitive fire starter. They don't provide flame or fire at your fingertips, as the saying goes. But there are a few things that make the ferro rod really important and really nice for survival. So the biggest considerations whenever you look for a fire starter for cold weather or for winter applications are really dexterity, gross motor skills, and cold resistance. And let's start off with dexterity. Now, dexterity and gross motor skills kind of go hand in hand, but where I was coming at from this is dexterity is how well can you do something or how well can you, you know, strike a ferro rod or start a fire, you know, hold a match, hold a lighter, you know, with mittens, with large gloves, you know, th these are the types of, you know, pieces of apparel you, you'll be wearing out here in the cold. I mean, you just wear mittens because it does get cold here. You know, you wear thick gloves to stay warm. And so if you can't have a fire starter that works well, you know, while wearing those types of apparel, you're going to really struggle to have good fire starter. So that's kind of where dexterity comes in. And gross motor skills is kind of the more survivally way of looking at it because in a survival situation, you may be deprived of the proper equipment or apparel to be wearing for the temperatures. And if you are, your hands will begin to lose function very fast. In fact, they're one of the first things to lose function when you start to get too cold. And so gross motor skills are your skills that do not require dexterity, that can be done while shaking, you know, violently, and, um, or maybe not violently, but shaking, you know, uh, starting to become cold. And, you know, when you can no longer do this, you know, gross motor skills become important because you've lost your fine uh, motor skills. So that's why I like ferro rods. They work well, you know, you can hold this with a mitten or better than just saying, I'll show. You know, you can hold a ferro rod very well. You know, this is a large mitten and it looks a little bit ridiculous because I'm in the car, but you know, you can hold this ferro rod as you can see, you know, very well with a ferro or with a mitten, you know, this big mitten. And this is one of the largest mittens I wear and I wear it for extreme cold temperatures. You know, so this is my large mitten and you can see that I'm holding this ferro rod fairly well. Now it's not perfect, but I can tell you that it's a lot easier to hold this ferro rod and you know, to hold a knife, which we'll just simulate, you know, imagine I had a mitten on this hand, you know, it's very easy to do this motion, you know, with a mitten on as opposed to trying to strike, you know, the little flint wheel of a lighter and to try to, you know, strike a match, you know, would be so hard with large mittens on like this. So when we come back to a ferro rod, the nice part is that it can be held well with different types of large winter apparel. So the dexterity is good. And once again, the motion of striking a ferro rod is a gross motor skill. You can do it while you're shaking. You can do it while you are cold, you know. It doesn't take much, you know, fine skill to grip the handle of a ferro rod 
and once again to grip the handle of a knife. And it doesn't have to be perfect grip, but you know, to grip these two and strike it does not require much, you know, fine motor skills to it. So the gross motor skill aspect is very good with a ferro rod as well as the dexterity. Now the last part is cold resistance and this is another part that I try to get people to understand with when we're dealing with winter time and when we're dealing with fire in winter time and that is that like I've said in the past you know big lighters are good and if you live in Arizona or you live in Texas you live in Utah you live in many of the warmer states this isn't really applicable to you but here in Alaska it's very applicable and that is the cold resistance of your tools and a ferro rod whether this gets wet whether this is negative 50 whether whatever happens you know this ferro rod is going to continue to throw sparks. Now those sparks are not going to be as hot at negative 50 as they are going to be at positive 50, but they will still throw sparks and hot enough to catch a fire. And that is the biggest thing for a ferro rod is it will work. Now, you know, with Zippos, they are fairly cold resistant, but things like Bic lighters, things like butane lighters will not work. And a lot of people might be kind of surprised, but if you look at stuff like your jet boils or your pocket rocket, you know, anything that uses an isobutane, you know, fuel, those don't work at negative 50 either. And it's just because they require the fuel to aerosolize. And while isobutane does a pretty good job, even at, you know, your teens kind of you know like 10 to 15 above when you start to dip down into zero or into the negatives that isobutane just stays a liquid it no longer aerosolizes and the same thing happens with your butane lighters or your big lighters you know that lighter fluid just continues to stay liquid it does not aerosolize into a gas that can be lit on fire so once again, a ferro rod is more basic and it's more tried and true. It's more, you know, foolproof ultimately. I think of, you know, a lot of fire starting kind of like the Murphy's Law. You know, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And so the ferro rod is very much cold resistant. And in addition, the last piece is kind of touching back on Murphy's Law again, you know, this is a very simple tool, and yes, ferrocerium is a hard metal, or hard alloy, I should say, so it can shatter, it can break, if you drop this on concrete, it will probably shatter, but by and large, there's no moving parts to this, there's no little flint wheels, you know, there's no, you know, wicks to this, there's nothing, there's, a, there's really just one thing, and that's just the metal alloy ferrocerium to this piece of ferro rod. There's not much to it, and so there's not much that can go wrong. And once again, when we're talking about survival, it's not saying that you shouldn't have things such as lighters or matches, because I'll say it again, you know, my personal survival kit does have lighters, matches, and a ferro rod in it, but the ferro rod is one of my preferred cold weather starters because it just doesn't have a lot of moving parts. And in the cold, moving parts can freeze, moving parts can break, you know, move, there's a lot that can go wrong when it comes to moving parts. Even with normal equipment, I mean, I've broke gear just because it got too cold and, you know, little plastic tabs just shear right off of, you know, even Maxpedition packs, you know, when things get too cold, they break. So, you know, having these moving parts and such can lead to failure, even in other pieces of gear. And so, you know, if my normal gear, if my packs are breaking, you know, if things are getting too brittle, that my pack is breaking, what makes you think that, you know, a lighter won't break either? You know, a plastic little big lighter. So you have to ask yourself these questions and, you know, be mindful of these things ultimately above all. So that's why I say that I really like the ferro rod for wintertime survival. Now, yes, it does take training. As I said earlier, you know, you can't just come out here and expect to start a fire with a ferro rod. You have to know how to do it. But in my opinion, a lot of people, a lot of survival, even instructors, make it out to seem that a ferro rod is an advanced skill or an advanced, you know, knowledge. And it certainly takes more than no knowledge. It, it takes some knowledge. But I have taught so many people how to start ferro rod fires. It's very easy. Easy. And once you understand, okay, I have to process whatever tinder I have down just a little bit, and you know, then I can start on fire. 
you know, once they make that connection, it's easy. And then they know how to use a ferro rod. It's like teaching a person how to fish. You know, once they understand how to fish, they got it. You know, it's like riding a bike. They got it. You know, they, they learn it. And now it's in their kind of tool belt of skills. So I would heavily encourage learning how to use a, a ferro rod. And I would even recommend I usually go out and practice in the winter fire starting with a ferro rod. I encourage it for anyone that is a serious woodsman in the winter. You know, if if for whatever reason you find yourself out here, whether it's for recreation or training purposes, I definitely encourage, you know, and recommend, you know, learning how to start a ferro rod fire because it's not terribly difficult. But the fact that the ferro rod is so impervious and the fact that the ferro rod is so bulletproof to an extent, you know, really makes it an excellent a fire starter for the winter. And so that's the crux of the conversation. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Hopefully this makes sense. And as always, God bless, and I'm out.